good morning to the delegates and all the and all the judges. So I am Abhilash Aditya. I am from Menopoi Medical College, Mangalore. And today I have a very interesting topic of uh, welders' tremors. So let me get to the introduction. What is it? Parkinsonism, as we know, is a clinical syndrome mainly carried by tired of rigidity, tremors, and bradykinesia. So actually, there is an imbalance between acetylcholine and dopamine. Rather, the acetylcholine increases or the dopamine decreases. The dopamine decreases as you know there is rigidity and if there is increased acetylcholine there is tremors. So there is abnormal, basically abnormal neuronal activity in the basal ganglia. So let me get to the case. This is a 25 year old right handed male. He had no history of any uh, uh, comorbidities as a well by occupation. And uh, as we can see the, uh, he had tremors and uh, weakness and slowness of the motor activity since one year. And when you go to the history of presenting illness, mostly the weakness was progressive in nature. And uh, fine motor company uh, had uh, fine motor complaints like buttoning, unbuttoning, writing, and also had uh, difficulty in cross motor like acceleration of the vehicle. And also this made him uh, uh, not go to regular work. And uh, almost all of the most of the motor activities were performed were very slow. When you come to the negative history, there was uh, no difficulty in combing of hair or weakness in the lower limbs in absent. There is no diplopia swaying, giddiness on standing, there is no, you know, there's no traumatic and there is no infective cause like fever, loose pulse and there is also no jaundice and there is no drug intake or cerebrovascular accident, no, no, no family history and also clear nerve involvement was not there. All of that also was absent. So when we come to the examination, mainly he had tremors in the right upper limb also and uh, also he had uh, the tone of the muscle of the right upper limb had a rigidity of corporate rigidity. As we know, when we made the patient, when we made the patient write his name, so you can see fine tremors present in his name. Also, when we made him to draw a, a spiral, so you can see fine tremors present. So power five and power was normal. Five movements, uh, writing speed was decreased. As we know, buttoning and uh, unbuttoning speed was also decreased. All the reflexes were normal. Sensory system was normal. No signs of injury irritation or cere cerebellar signs. As a small video clip. So when we come to the differential diagnosis, mainly the patient that we had suspected could be Wilson's, structural lesions, calcifications, tumors, or CVA. It could be psychogenic, even toxin induced was in the back of our mind. So when we made lab reports, mainly two main investigations was that for Wilson's seroplasmin level was there and 24 hour copper levels were there. The, it was normal and uh, MRI was done, so it uh, ruled out many of the structural lesions causes. And uh, when, you have, when you come to the treatment, we, the patient was given with uh, Prabiprexol and Amantidine. So also main thing was changing the occupation was advised as he was a vendor. And the fo and on follow up, the patient showed uh, signs in reduction of symptoms after the treatment and uh, reduced occupational exposure. So what made me come to the diagnosis was the age of the patient. He was hardly 25 years of age. He was a vendor by occupation and there was no drug intake drug abuse or any fever or infective cause, there is no KF rings present 
I mean the MRI was normal. So what makes this case very interesting when we come to the drugs of it? It's a secondary Parkinson's disease caused due to chronic exposure of manganese. So it's a preventable, preventable occupational disease, and it's also uh, resistant to levodopa therapy. And uh, actually, in India, very less or no, almost no research has been done in the early causes of Parkinsonism in India. And uh, what happens is, uh, it's less known among the physicians and the underdiagnosed disease. And uh, when you come to the discussion about, uh, it's mainly due to when uh, chronic exposure of ma manganese, so which causes and the liver actually metabolizes. So if there is chronic exposure, the liver, the liver is not able to metabolize it and uh, it goes to systemic circulation and thus leading to damage of the brain neurotoxicity. So mainly there is one gene which is uh, a study showed, the uh, SLC38 and gene mutation is also being linked to it. Thank you so much. Basal ganglion. Oh, basal ganglion contains nucleus like putamen, globus pallidus, substantia nigra, pass compactor, pass regulator, subthalamic nucleus. But how about you did not represent, uh, you did not depict the living, living bodies are not there in your exam? There was no living body. Huh? Yeah, it's a, no it's a secondary Parkinsonism, so that, that is no living body. That could have been the uh, confirmed to test for your thing. Otherwise, I would attribute it more to the uh, uh, cellular disease only. Yeah. Craft phenomena you did not detect, you did not show the micrographia. All these things should have been there fundamentally for the Parkinson's disease. So for the past 15 years, from the age of 10 he has been working under his father as a very how do you differentiate tremor of cerebral lung tremor and Parkinson's tremor? What are the differences? Ma'am, in cerebral lung mainly tremor, the is present or uh, tremor is present in the neck, ma'am. No, no, I'm and, talking about hand tremor. And mainly there is, uh, in cerebral lung tremor, resting tremors and here there is intentional tremors, ma'am. In cerebral lung there are intentional tremors and uh, in uh, Parkinson's there is resting tremors. Did you do a finger to finger test in this case? Uh, no, ma'am. Why, why do you want to Why am I talking about this? Finger to finger? For cerebral activities. What are the things? What are the things? There's the, when there's cerebral like the finger, no finger test is not. Yeah, either the overshoot or the other shoot. Any of them. Yes. Okay, so that is very important. Also, did you examine his walking gait? And gait was normal, man. You didn't mention. What gait you expect in the Parkinson's disease? Fisting and gait. So he didn't complain and you also didn't mention it. That is important, it is important. And early Parkinson's disease, there is work being done in India, it is not a rare activity. Yes. We don't see many cases. Of course, both those genetic, other, other causes are very really common. Yes. What other toxins other than manganese? Um, carbon monoxide toxin, there is even met uh, methanol toxin. In India, what is more common? In India, in India. What is more common? Uh, pesticides. Farmers. We do get many farmers early onset Parkinsonism, pesticides. Because they don't wear any mask, gloves, nothing. They just wear hands and uh, bare chest. Yes. They don't even come. They remove all the upper clothing and then go for yes. uh, pesticide spray. So that's the thing. One of the common reasons. Yes. Because the poison of the is bilateral, like 
brand to pick up only one design. So when do you see more of them only utterly unilateral? It has to be some vascular. Yes. So vascular we will look more into when there is a unilateral tumor, either a vascular or a granulomatous lesion or a calcification. Are it tumor, even tumors in the are in that area are an unusual. Those kind of focal lesions can cause a pure unilateral.